Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody, and thank you, Alzheimer Europe, for organizing such a nice uh, symposium conference. And uh, my presentation um, will give inspiration on the theme of social health. It's an intervention that has been developed in Belgium, not especially intended for persons with dementia, but I, my main message is think about and uh, it might be a, a worthwhile way of working uh, ahead with persons with dementia as well. I'm a, a postdoc researcher from the University of Leuven, but we have done this uh, in a team uh, with uh, other researchers and my director, Chantal van Oudenhoven, as well. I will introduce you to narrative care, the intervention, and then uh, go into the three topics that we've studied, the profile of the life story writer, an evaluation study, and uh, a qualitative experience uh, study of the participants, and then discuss with you what might be the relevance of this for persons with dementia. It all starts in Brussels, where the community mental health care team um, is, was concerned about the growing individualization where older people live alone, isolated, uh, and there were, is really in society a kind of ageism and a negative image on growing older and not counting anymore. Uh, and on the other hand, they were um, really enthusiastic about the role of life stories in people's life when you meet each other. Uh, it's really essential of how, how you are and, and what you want to tell stories about your life and a step further in making a balance of your life and coming to, uh, yeah, uh, to an equilibrium with who you are and what you have accomplished in your life. So they studied more about it and, uh, well, they found evidence as in literature, you, you all know, that older people and women are more vulnerable for depression. Um, that is one aspect that really uh, triggered them. A second thing is that reminiscence, uh, retrieving memories, is a, a valuable, valuable activity. Everybody does it in some way. Uh, but a step further is doing it in a structured way with really the goal of making a balance of your life and um, thinking about the positive things that you have accomplished, but also try to integrate the negative experiences that you have uh, uh, acquainted in your life and uh, in that way uh, growing your inner strength. A second positive element of life review that has been studied also is that it may help to find specific autobiographical memories and this is, relates to the depressive uh, uh, point. Persons with depression tend to generalize the negative feelings and it may be helpful to help them retrieve specific positive memories to, um, to tackle the images of, I'm always a failure, for example. This combined with two uh, group interventions that they found in uh, the Netherlands on uh, life review and narrative therapy inspired them to change and develop an, a new individual life review intervention. With the aim, three aims, they want to really give a positive voice to older people, strengthen their identity, and help, be helpful in preventing the development of depression. So here you see a picture. On the right there is Mikis. He is one of the two life story writers. Um, they decided from the beginning on not to uh, develop a group intervention, but really to focus on an individual uh, um, study and visit persons living in the community, most of them living alone. Uh, and um, the life story writer visits them in a, on a regular basis, mostly two weekly, a two weekly session of about a one hour. And it is structured as follows. Um, a first session is just getting to know each other and uh, building trust and gaining, get, setting up a relationship. 
And then the core part is about uh, fixed teams uh, where the person is, is uh, recruit, asked to, to tell more about what his childhood was like, adulthood, and then gradually move on. It's building up, uh, going to also difficult periods, what social relationships are important and were important, the highs and the lows in um, one's life. And then you see uh, a specific session going to these precious memories to really uh, relive things that were forgotten and by, by, by doing this, by talking about this, strengthening the, the identity. This all, these eight sessions, result in the fact that in between the life story writer starts writing a book, um, consist it's, it's, it's a small book, uh, but with uh, important anecdotes, stories of that person, pictures uh, in, in uh, negotiation with the person, they both decide what will be in it. They also uh, develop an identity circle, I will come to that later on, and the session, the, the intervention is completed with a session on, well, now we're, we're going to say goodbye, but what are future actions that you want to, want to take in your life? Have you any aspirations? Uh, what can you do? Etc. I've told already that we have done, it's, uh, it's been a long, long work since 2010 we started uh, joining this team uh, and we have done in three consecutive, consecutive studies uh, the, yeah, the evaluation of this intervention. The first one is that uh, because it's a new function, a life story writer, I don't know if there are other countries that know such a uh, a person, we wanted to see what, what are the competences that are necessary and in literature you found differing, different opinions. Uh, some say it must be really experienced healthcare professionals, uh, highly educated, uh, even with uh, psychotherapeutic skills, while uh, there are other uh, authors that say well mainly you need very good communication skills and active listening and structuring. Now, based on literature and our interviews with the two uh, life story writers, we set up a group of five core competencies. The communication skills, of course, you have to be, uh, be able to talk uh, in a respectful way, uh, structuring and facilitating conversation, but also knowledge about older people, about uh, their living circumstances. You see, both life story writers are very young, so they had to be to get acquainted with, for instance, uh, the, the the circumstances uh, of during war periods and and how life in Brussels was at, uh, several decades ago. You have to know how to interact with older people in a respectful, I would say, person-centered way, and uh, <laughs> definitely skills about the intervention itself, life review, they got a real training on that. But very important as well are uh, some generic skills like being open-minded, having humor, creativity, um, respectfulness. So that for the part of the, the, the life story writer. Um, during, since 2010 till now, we did a pre-test, post-test study. Um, it's important to say that people were only allowed at the, the intervention when they were frail uh, in some way, physically, mentally or socially. And we excluded persons who really suffered from de uh, depression, clinical depression. We referred them to uh, specialized help. Um, we really had the, the, the intention to have positive outcomes, to strengthen the, identi uh, the identity, and therefore you see on the top our six main outcomes are depressivity, loneliness and anxiety, but we really want, hoped to find positive active effects on mastery, self-esteem and resilience to uh, really found, found uh, these uh, things. We registered a lot of background variables as well. Now, during that uh, period, we 100 uh, persons were contacted, 70 
started with a pretest. So sometimes people weren't initially interested but didn't want to enroll further. And d due to multiple reasons, uh, there were a lot of dropouts, as you can imagine, because there are older people, but also sometimes they were moving to a nursing home or they deceased. Um, however, we did a non-response analysis to see if there is some selection and we found no difference in the group that did only the pretest and the group that finally really uh, concluded the intervention. A typical uh, participant is a woman, she's older than 75, she has a lower education that's, uh, at that time, most of them were widows, and um, they were fairly well, uh, about half of the sample had ever been treated for depression or taken antidepressants. What about the results? We did found uh, an effect on two measures, and it was uh, nice to see that it, it was both in a positive and a negative way. We found that persons increased in their self-esteem, they found themselves more self-worth uh, after the participating in narrative care, and they felt less anxious. However, we did not find any effects on the other outcomes, and that's still a, a question why uh, that would that would be. I must admit that there are methodological limit limitations uh, due to feasibility reasons. We had no budget to have a par uh, researchers uh, registering the measure measures apart, so the, the scales were administered when the life story writer was visiting, but uh, the person completed them, uh, and uh, there was no control group, of course. Um, we had, uh, yeah, we think it's a worthful uh, intervention, it's a minif minimal effect, but it is in line with what you can find in literature, and participants are really positive about the interventions. Now, we wanted to gain more information, what do they feel about it, and therefore we conducted interviews and a focus group with uh, them. And there were three motives for participation. You see that all the people join in. Uh, a, gr a large group does it because they feel lonely and they are happy to have somebody visiting or looking forward uh, to having somebody at home. Another aspect is the, the fact of um, generativity, giving something to the other generation, passing on. Uh, somebody says, well, I, I really want to write down how hard my life was so my grandson can see that I am really, uh, I had a hard life and, and that, he, he, that he gets courage out of it. Uh, and a small group really said that they, that they did it to search to, to, to regain a balance in their life and uh, to really reconsider what has been good and bad. We've got two minutes for conclusion. I will speed on. Thank you. Um, there are negative experiences. Um, a few of the participants said that they, in between sessions, kept ruminating or reliving uh, memories, and that is something that the life story writer really should be sensitive of. Most of them had felt uh, flattered and were uh, restarting activities, contacts, uh, or gained more confidence. Now. Let's come to the main point. What is then the relevance for persons with dementia? I've told about this life story book, and here you see a picture of the identity circle. Based on all the stories, we, we made this summary. In the middle, there are the values and core qualities of this person, and around you have four fields mentioning what context the birds, person's like, what kind of environment, how she, he or she wants to be treated, and what activities uh, they like. There were a small group, most of them didn't have dementia, but a small number of them um, did so, was able to participate in conversation, and we realized two interviews with, some, with persons that entered the nursing home after the intervention, and here you see that uh, both the children and the staff were very pleased with those two, two documents. The person himself wasn't able to talk about anymore. We, we did it together with the life story writer and they recognized him. 
but um, this child said, well, it may, this book really made me help of uh, getting connected to her and the staff as well said that they were uh, yeah, able to, to give more uh, individualized care because of this of information. This is my last one, okay? <laughs> well, um, I hope that I have introduced uh, to you and uh, that it's clear that narrative care differs from traditional reminiscence-based interventions for persons with dementia, but I think that this may be a proactive a way of uh, intervening that may be benef beneficial for persons with dementia as well. I think the life story writer as a new function is uh, interesting and uh, it's uh, um, a new way of seeing it. Uh, however, you should be re really uh, careful in uh, assuring the quality and uh, uh, paying attention to possible negative effects. And of course, we need more research, but that is uh, fine. I'll end up with a quote of someone who participated and she said, well, I've learned that sometimes you have to look back to be able to get on. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that's... I think that's